Howdy, and welcome to another edition of On the Road with Larry Dixon. This time we are off to New Orleans. We being my sister Melissa, brother-in-law John, who did all the driving, bless his heart. Our first stop was the riverboat, the city of New Orleans, so I need to change hats so I'll fit in with the New Orleans crowd where we had a fantastic lunch, business cemetery, swamp tours, I took a cooking class. The next uh, two, three, four episodes, we're going to explore New Orleans as we saw it. Today, we are in New Orleans and we're gonna spend the next week exploring the sights and sounds and we're gonna start out our adventure with the city of New Orleans. We've got uh, lunch already reserved, so let's check out the boat and see what else New Orleans has to offer. Once we boarded the city of New Orleans for a two-hour cruise, the big paddled wheeler churned the Mississippi waters and sent us on our way. And yes, it is a true paddle wheeler, as you can hear in the background. We got lucky as we were the first group to be seated for lunch. We were served a delicious Cajun trio of cornmeal crusted fried fish, classic red beans and rice with the traditional chicken and sausage jambalaya for dessert bread pudding. Back on deck, we saw hurricane damages lining the shore from previous hurricanes that still scar one of America's busiest seaports. We passed the ship Cape Kennedy which is one of the United States Military Sea Lift Command's roll-on, roll-off ships. Roll-on, roll-off ships are cargo ships designed to carry wheeled cargo such as cars, motorcycles, trucks, semi-trailer trucks, buses, railroad cars that are driven on and off the ship on their own wheels. This port is extremely busy as you can see but the many barges, tugboats, and other commercial ships that we passed on our two-hour cruise. What's a visit to New Orleans without a swamp tour? Our tour bus took us to what else but Louisiana swamp tour. I must admit it wasn't quite what I expected having watched them good old boys on TV catching gators, but it was fun and informational. We boarded our boat and headed upriver. Taking a hard left turn, we entered the bayous. The first thing I learned that alligators hibernate in the winter. Being cold-blooded critters, it makes sense. I just never put that much thought into the alligator sleeping habits. So there weren't a lot of gators prowling around, but we did get to see a few. Our first stop was Raccoon Landing. Those raccoons have a hankering for marshmallows. Or is it the sugar they're addicted to? We finally get to see a gator swimming around. He knows the sound of this boat, and he's going to get some marshmallows just like the raccoons do. The captain of the boat extends an invitation for him to come aboard, and he did. After he let the gator back into the bayou, just to make sure we would get to see a live gator and even touch one board. So what you see here is the 200 year old Fleming Cemetery. It's located on a large Indian mound on the bank of the bayou Baratara. It's time we head back to the boat dock and check out our next adventure. We travel about an hour west of New Orleans to Oak Alley. The Mississippi River runs parallel to our route to this plantation. Our tour guide pointed out that several people live along the river totally off the grid with no electricity or any other modern conveniences. He did state that the mosquitoes are a problem. We finally arrive at Oak Alley. This stop of our New Orleans adventure, we are at Oak Alley. It's an old sugarcane plantation. Absolutely gorgeous. As you can see the building behind us, it is an amazing plantation. However, we're not allowed to take photos inside, but I'm going to get several and show those to you from the outside. So let's check it out. As we enter Oak Alley and show our tickets, we're greeted by beautiful mansion and gardens that are meticulously groomed and absolutely gorgeous. However, the history of this plantation does have a dark side. 
a history that should never be glossed over or forgotten. During its 200-year history, it has been a sugar plantation, an abandoned investment property, and a cattle ranch. Today, it is a historic site. Oak Alley takes its name from a row of 28 live oak trees stretching from the mansion to the Mississippi River. Slaves planted mature oak trees in pairs, mature being either 10 years of age or fruiting. This sugarcane plantation was built on the backs of many enslaved people who were brought to Louisiana from the West African region. Our tour guide said that sugarcane was a high-risk crop and that the profits from sugar were high, therefore the moniker white gold. White gold for the owners of the plantation, but not those slaving in the fields. The slave cabins you see here aren't original buildings. The original buildings were destroyed by hurricanes years ago. The slave community at Oak Alley included men, women, and children, most of whom occupied a set of 20 double or duplex structures in an area between the mansion and the sugar mill referred to as the quarters. In all, those enslaved at Oak Alley numbered on average between 110 and 120 people. In most cases, those enslaved at Oak Alley are only noted in purchase papers or inventories. In addition to those considered field slaves, a large number of domestic or house slaves worked at Oak Alley, as many as 19. These men and women, as young as 12, worked in the mansion cooking and serving dinner, cleaning the house, watching children, and so forth. However, the excessive number of domestics at Oak Alley had a secondary significance. They were the ultimate demonstration of wealth. On the grounds today stands the replica of the slave quarters, and in one of the structures lists the names of some of the slaves that labored there. Inside the mansion, some of the furnishings are original to the mansion, but all are period correct. See you in the next episode as we continue our adventure in New Orleans.